uh, you like? Seems like he's been kind of making a push with the playing time that he's been getting. Yeah, Jalen, he's a very smart player. Obviously, coming up, you know, high school, he played the mic position. So for him, it's been easy to pick up the position, but he's a physical guy. He's tough. He's extremely smart. He can play both Sam and Rush. And then, you know, last week against Seattle, you seen him, you know, he can win on the edge. And it was uh, good to see him power rush early in the game to kind of set the tone. But he's a he's a good young player. Um, he's mature for his age. And uh, he, he just continues to get better. Pass rushers talk about a lot having different tools in the toolbox. How, how deep is his toolbox? Uh, right now, I just want him to have two in the toolbox right now. And that's for mostly all of them, especially the young guys. What do you do extremely well, okay? You hone on to that one and then have a second move. As you start to master those two, now we can pick up another one to put in that toolbox. But for me, I like seeing them go hit somebody in the face early on to kind of set the message and then try to win on the edge. How do you feel about our edge rusher path going past the quarterback? That used to be a big issue here. Yeah. But they didn't want that to ever happen. Are you willing to accept that a little bit in exchange for a guy? No, you never, wanna, you never want to you never want to create voids in the in, in the defense by guys going ten plus yards um to, to win on the edge. You know, you always want to get the quarterback level. Sometimes you might get pushed a, a little bit further, but you got to counter and come back. But no, we want to collapse the pocket. We want we want the pocket to shrink. Uh, we want to dominate in the A and B gap. So when the quarterback does step up, there's nowhere for him to go. Um, you know, we're not going to treat it as a cage rush. Sometimes guys can win on the edge, but if you're ever too high or too wide, it's not good for the defense. Jalen and, and Harold and Arden, who else maybe in that edge rush group is getting your attention uh, on a regular basis? Uh, Weave has done a good job, you know, when he's out there. Um, obviously, we have, the, we have the stallers. And then Caleb's done an excellent job when he has the ability to go out there and rush. Um, right now, we're working through, you know, the rush package, who's going to be out on the field. We also have some DBs that can come down and, and rush off the edge, uh, like Jamal Adams. So just we're working through all that, but guys are flash. Um, they're all trying to take the coaching. They're competing. They're trying to win their one-on-ones, and that's a big thing going into this game. I want to see the guys convert and win one-on-ones this week at a higher rate. Backers, uh, Otis Reese and, and Chance Campbell, how do you like the way they've come along and kind of acquitted themselves, you know, to be able to be in competition? For yeah, the we, when we first got here, the big question mark was about the linebackers. I think all the linebackers have gotten better. I think Frank Bush does a great job of developing players, and you can see him. I mean, from, from Kenneth Murray to, to, to Gibby to Otis to Chance, all the guys are getting better and better, and every time they go out there and they have an opportunity to compete, they're making the best of their opportunity, and I love where they're at right now. Disappointing that you haven't been able to see much of Cedric Gray over the last few weeks. Uh, I wouldn't say it's disappointing. Obviously, he got hurt, and the injury is is out of his control or anybody else's. Um, you know, but you do want to see him in live action. You want to see see him do what he does best and play physical football. Right now, we haven't had him out on the field to, to see that. Um, you know, and I don't know when we'll get him back. That's up to Cali and and and, and the training staff on, on when he comes back. Inside linebackers have talked about it being two distinct positions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like it's strictly weak and strong. What's, what's the distinction? No, I mean, you know, you have a Mike linebacker and you have a what we consider the dime backer when we get into nickel. Um, and the dime, the dime backer is kind of interchangeable. The dime can also be another safety or, or a guy with versatility. But right now, and I think that, you know, all the guys are doing well enough to – to uh, stay on the field, you know, in terms of coverage, in terms of the landmarks, in terms of playing a little bit of man-to-man -man here and there. I think they all have done a good job. You know, for me, it's the Mike and the Dime or the Mike and the Wheel linebacker. They're interchangeable. Are you seeing Mason Weaver earlier? Are you seeing enough from him, or, or do you think there's more? For I, a well, I, I, you know, with any player, I think it's more in the tank. Um, with him, it's just about the confidence and just believing in what he's doing on a daily basis. Because when he plays angry, and he plays with confidence, he's a really good player. And, you know, that's what we're trying to instill on him, that every day is that same, we want that same guy. How do you make him angry? Uh, well, I have, we, we all have our ways to do, to do that. James with Williams with the, seems to uh, really be showing up. How much thinking is he doing? How much is he doing kind of what you guys are asking? Where you just go? Uh, he's, uh, he's doing a hell of a job. From a guy that just moved from the safety position to go down a linebacker, you see him on film, he doesn't look out of place. Um, you know, he can blitz, he can come downhill. He's doing a better job of reading his keys. There's some things where his eyes, are, you know, can wander a little bit, but that's that's expected. 
Um, he asks all the right questions. He meets with Frank Bush extra. I think James, the, the, he's going in the right direction, and uh, I can't wait to see when he really puts it all together. With all the secondary pieces that you have, mm -hmm. with Quandre coming in late, with Jarius on a management plan, and Cheeto been hurt a little bit, how do you ensure that when the time comes for the regular season that the timing, the technique, and, and, every, and the communication will all be there? The one thing about all those gentlemen that you, you just talked about, they're all professionals. And they've done it, and they've done it at a high level. Um, they do a lot of talking in meeting rooms. Obviously, when we go out there and do walkthroughs, you know, all of them are out there on the field. We'll, we'll get them all on the field together before we line up and play the first game. But I like where they're at. Uh, all of them are pros, and uh, we'll be just fine. And that comfort to move him up to the top of the chart so quickly. Well, you know, he's been one of the better free safeties in the National Football League for a while. He's a guy that could touch the ball. He plays with the mentality that we want to play with around here. And he's an extremely smart player. So him coming in here give, give us the versatility, gives us a true post safety with flexibility to go down in the, in, in, in the box if we need him. But, you know, he's, a, he's an exceptional player, and I'm excited to have him. As with Jamal, and, uh, Jamal Adams, excuse me. Uh, what is it that makes those guys able to play off each other so well and have the success that they've had before? Well, I think both of them, they're really, they're really tight. You know, they're, they're friends off the field and they believe in one another. And it's a little bit of a yin and yang. You know, you, you got the, the iron fist in Jamal and then Quandre, even though he's a, he's a pit bull, but he complements Jamal's style. And I think that sometimes it's, you, you don't always want guys that's the same. You know, they both have a different skill set, and I think they play to their skill sets extremely well. You guys so much competition for those last couple of cornerback spots. Have you seen any separation between those four or five guys? No, I mean, you know, it's a big game this week. You know, it's a big week this week, all right? It's, it's, it's about getting better every day. All those guys have done extremely well. It's just about who's going to be the most consistent one. You know, the young guys, obviously, it's the first and second time they've ever lined up in the National Football League. So they've made some mistakes on the field with eye discipline, technique, things of that nature. But as they keep playing, they'll get better. And uh, we'll see who separates themselves come this week. Go ahead, what do you evaluate in the game? For that separation? Is it all eye discipline stuff or are there other traits? No, it's, it's other things. How physical they are, you know, what they're doing at the line of scrimmage in term of, terms of press. Are they connected at the top of the route? Are they competing at a high level? Uh, their willingness to throw their face in there and, and tackle and hit people. There's a lot of things that go to it. It's, it's the communication, you know. Uh, do they have any lapses that, that hurts the defense because they thoroughly don't understand uh, what they're doing? So it's those type things show up all the time. Got some tough decisions coming up by the by the team next week. Mm -hmm. How much will you fight? I'm not gonna ask you who you're gonna fight for, but how much will you fight for guys, and how much are you involved in the process with Brian and with with Rand and Chad to kind of make sure you? Well, one thing one thing about being around here, everybody's on the same page. Um, so we we are in constant communication about players, um, personnel meetings about who's getting better. Um, who's who's not doing as well, who can get better. So we'll all have the conversation, and ultimately it's up to, to Rand and, and Cali to make those decisions. What would you like to see maybe from your, one of your starters uh, that, that maybe you didn't see in the first preseason game? When, well, the when biggest you... thing from the first preseason game, I want to see them start fast, right? The first time we had a lot of guys out there, and all the starters weren't playing. Um, we still haven't seen the full 11. Right. But some of the younger guys, you know, they were a little nervous. But those guys have had playing time. They've had the experience. Now and I just want to see them come out there and play fast, play settled football. All right. Go out there and execute and then, you know, get to work where they're supposed to and then get off the field. How did Isaiah Iden do uh, Saturday night? It seemed like he was pretty active in there in the middle. Yeah, he's uh, he's getting better as well. He's another guy that that's that doesn't know the NFL game right now, but he's strong, he's physical, he's uh, willing to learn, he plays with great effort, and you saw it, you know, they balanced the rush, he was one on one on one, got a sack. Um, he's getting better, he's a, he's a guy that we like working with. And Shadobi, guys, you feel confident you can just plug them in, practices week one, and they'll be ready to go? I have no doubt in my mind that they'll be ready to play come week one in Chicago. Thanks, yep. appreciate Thanks. it. Hoping and, and needing to see from your, your first team guys, Will and the other guys in the, in the last preseason game. Uh, you know, I think we just want to be efficient, right? I think first time on the road, you know, a historically very loud building. I know it won't be kind of, you know, regular season levels, but, you know, we need to handle ourselves kind of appropriately on the road. 
kind of take this operation and kind of move it along and kind of feel like we're in a mid-season form. You know, this is really our last chance for a real dress rehearsal before we go to play the Bears on the road. So I think handling all those kind of distractions and getting that process for us would be kind of nice. And then obviously, you know, have success too and go out there. You know, we had the two, they had the two drives against San Francisco, you know, that we really kind of got stopped on the first drive in the red zone with that short field. And then the second drive, we punched it in. So we're kind of looking for real efficiency, you know. Now, what's your job like, I guess, right now? We got prep, prepping for Saints. You know, you got some guys that are not going to be on the team this time next week. And then you got a regular season opener coming up, too. How do you balance all of that? So it's actually been kind of fun from that standpoint of really today. For the first time, we're going to start introducing like our game week process to the guys. So we're going to go through some of the installs, some of the presentations, you know, on offense, each uh, position coach and a lot of the position assistants have different areas. So they're going to show, hey, when we go play the Bears and for the rest of the season, whatever, but this Saints, here's what their personnel looks like. Hey, here's what we're expecting them to play here and kind of give them our players the first real in-season this is how we're going to give you the information. So that's one thing. And then, uh, so that's really the afternoons right now. And then in the mornings, we're really prepping for still training camp style evaluation practices. So we're doing that as just kind of a mental exercise. But then uh, in the mornings, like we just really prep for practice and then practices against the Titans. We're just really still in the evaluation stage from the football on the field stuff. The game, obviously, but how do you feel about the progress of the starting offensive line uh, in both pass protection and run block? You know, I think the you watched last week against Seattle. You know, they really got two games in on whatever that was, Wednesday and Thursday. And I thought the run game, you know, we really started out really well, especially on Thursday. You know, those first eight, ten plays, we had some pretty big gashes, some good runs. And then, you know, they kind of got going and got us a little bit. And it was kind of like the feel, the flow of a regular season game where you're not just going to kind of go and impose your will on somebody. So uh, from an evaluation standpoint, we really feel like those guys are starting to gel. You know, it's really been the same three center, left guard, left tackle for the whole time. And now really Nick and Dylan, you know, have kind of moved up a little bit, or I would say they've started to separate. You know, I'm not certainly the evaluation is not over, but uh, I think we can kind of picture it as a group of how it's going to flow in the regular season. As you move forward into that game week standard, like op operation order operations, how is that going to be? How is that going to evolve with, with Will? Whereas you know, you guys sit down and he says, "I like these concepts. I don't like these." And you say, "Hey, these apply to." This. Yeah. You know what? So I we've really already started that with him. You know, he kind of. In the middle of training camp, we kind of said, all right, tell us the things you're the most comfortable with. Okay, here's, I feel for, against every coverage, I know where to go with the ball on. Play A, B, C, D, these ones. These ones I don't feel as good about. And then, you know, then for that conversation, sorry, start, okay, why don't you feel good about it? Okay, it's man, I don't love this answer versus man. So we've kind of gone through that list already. And then he came in yesterday and we were kind of just sitting around and he had already started his own thoughts on the Saints. So Brian and I were sitting there and Bo and the rest of the crew and then he comes in and gives us his, give us his list. And we kind of, the good thing about it is he saw a lot of the same things. We're already seeing it similar. So he's like, I like these four plays and they're like, oh, we got those four already. These are in. So it's started and then it'll just kind of keep growing from there. We've made so much about the Will and Calvin connection. Just mm -hmm. From your perspective, what are some of the technical things they need to you know, there's a little bit of uh, not bad luck, but there was a couple ones where, like against Seattle, we ended up having he was kind of running this like bench takeoff thing, and it's going to be wide open, and he kind of gets grabbed, so he kind of stops running, and then it's like so. There's a little bit of that of oh, we would have it, you know, but there's no uh, really replacement for actually completing that ball. It's not like we can all keep sitting here and say it'll happen. Uh, so I, I think it's going to come with reps. I think there's in some days they've had really good days and there's times where they've both been at fault. You know, each guy said, oh, shoot, he's got to do it better. He's got, and it just kind of comes with time and we're really not concerned about it from a um, production standpoint. Go ahead. Oh, you got to follow up. Go ahead. Is there any indication on why the good days are good and the bad days are bad? No, I think. The, 
part of it is uh, our defense does a really good job of playing kind of like some unscouted looks. And so we keep thinking, you know, Denard's going to do this. And we've got these couple coverages up. And all right, if they play these three main coverages he plays, and then twice he's throwing some pretty good wrinkles at us. And all of a sudden, the adjustment changes, which is really good for us for regular season practice. But uh, I think we'd also love to hit a couple of those and feel like, oh, we what we're saying is going to happen is going to happen. So uh, it's a balancing act, but we're not stressed about it, I would say. But Brian said that uh, Tajay and Tony are two of the best backs he's ever had in pass protection. Uh, how can you use that? And what are some of the advantages that those guys have in pass protection maybe that other running backs don't? You know, they play – you hear Randy Jordan talk about, you know, you see with Stripe on the helmet and eye violations, you know. So if you're a, have an eye violation as a running back, you know, your blitz pickup is here. So we see here to here, your eye, sh you know, shouldn't, shouldn't go here to here and see the Stripe going kind of back and forth. And you watch those two and they – have very clean eyes. So they go here to here and they kind of know how to pull the trigger. So from a quarterback standpoint and from a offensive coaching standpoint, you sit there and you're like, okay, they're dialed in on this is exactly where they're supposed to be. They understand that, hey, we're pointing this guy. So that means they've got one of these two guys or however we do it on that certain protection. And there's a confidence in there to be able to drop back and not have to check a bunch of protections or he's really going to say with the quarterback, all right, I know I'm going there. I got the rest of them for you. And if they both come, the quarterback knows he's hot, but there's a comfort level of I'm not going to have any free runners. So it's been nice from that standpoint. What are things with, uh, I guess, Mason and Malik in your mind as far as how they've handled camp in preseason games? I, you know, we're really happy with both of them. Uh, you know, Malik got a chance to start the other night and, you know, one of you know, I was telling these guys the other day, sometimes it's like, you know, Malik just kind of gets some bad breaks out there. You know, the first first all, first false start was his fault. You know, he kind of went up there and had a kind of a, his cadence got off, and now it was going to be third and six, third and 11, then we're off the field. And then the next one, left tackle jumps, It's on, and you know, he gets two drives in the first quarter, and we're in third and manageable, and they, you know, jump offside. So that's like, for him, I think the, you know, I know some of the, Mason had two touch or has had more scoring drives and those kind of things, but Malik has done just you know he had a couple of really big throws. He had the big throw to Sam or uh, on the right side, another one to Bryce on the right side. So you know they've both had their moments of doing things really really well. Mason had one where he uh, uh, kind of ended up buying some time in the pocket and throwing to his left and getting to complete. So they've both played at a high level and we're happy with both of it, but I think they both would say they have things to improve as well. So I don't think either one was a finished product. How's the growth curve for David Martin Robinson? Hey, man, I'll say this. He has been like the surprise of, not the surprise of camp, but the the way he's kind of taken, a, taken it and run with it. And I think there's some guys when the pads come on, they shrink, and there's some guys when the pads come on and they kind of rise up, and all of a sudden he felt like a really natural football player. And it was, I think when you're in here in OTAs and you're doing all this different stuff and you really can't hit anybody and those you know there's you're just trying to worry about the techniques and he kind of took all those techniques in the spring he came back put the pads on and he came alive so we're really happy with here he is he shows up you know what you're seeing on the preseason games what you guys see out here in practice kind of shows up every day so for a rookie to play with a consistency and at a high level and a undrafted one that is pretty impressive and we're really excited what would you say are some early indications that Will Levis could be that guy for you? I think the way he carries himself, the way he handles adversity. You know, I think when things don't go well for him in practice, you can feel that he wants it, but he, he has the ability to, you know, just like we we're talking about with some missed deep balls or, hey, there's a protection error or something like that. It's he can handle it. He can bounce back, and then the next play is a big one. You know what I mean? I, I know he threw the uh, – he was so, you know, mad at himself. He threw the pick at the two minute against Seattle and he's kind of sitting there and, you know, he's, but it's not crippling for him to have a mistake like that. So I think for those to have that mental mindset and the ability to bounce back and all those other things, we know the physical tools and there's a million guys with physical tools, but for him, the mental of that. And he also gives really good information with what he sees. So. When he comes back from the, hey, what'd you see there? Oh, I saw the safety coming down, so I went over here. And it's 
always what happened. You know, I think there's a lot of other guys that I uh, found the safety and it's like, dude, that guy's 20 yards deep. What are you talking about? So those to me are the indications, you know, as it gets harder and against better defenses and in the regular season, we'll expect that growth to continue. Awesome. Thanks, guys. What you got? I guess Ron said you talked him into Linton Brayton. I guess kicked a long <laughs> one. Uh, I guess it's good to have uh, have trust from him and pretty confident he would would make would make it. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a coach, that's your job is to uh, you know be confident in, in these guys. And um, you know, Braden showed us that he's got the talent, the leg talent to hit from there. And uh, you know, if it's a regular season, I don't know if we, we make that same call, but I, I felt good at the time uh, about him making that and converting on that. But um, yeah, ha happy with the way that ended, obviously. How's he, he been for you, I guess, since he got here, Brighton? Uh, he, he's been good. Uh, every day he comes with the mindset he wants to get better. Um, he knows he's got to get better, and so he, he approaches practice the right way. Um, very pleased with, with the way he's, the way he's uh, handled his business. Give and take in that conversation with you and Brian about going to kick, or how'd that go down? Uh, no, we looked at each other. I said, "Let's kick it." He said, "All right." Um, no, I, I think at the time, you know, we we felt good with where we were at. Um, our defense was doing a great job at that time too. So, hopefully, if you know, if he, if he doesn't make that, then we can get go three and out and get the ball back. But um, if that's a regular season game, I don't know if we make that same call. But preseason was is opportunity to see what Brain's all about, and um, yeah. I like the way Jaquan Jackson has come along as, as a returner. I, I, I'm very pleased with Jake, uh, Jaquan. You know, Q's just like Brain. He, he's, he's young. Um, he's matured in this last three weeks tremendously. Um, he, he's out early every day catching balls. Uh, KB, Coach KB has been doing a great job working with him and the other returners. And uh, he continues to get better. And um, he's a guy we can trust back there. I know at Tulane they're worse a couple times, muff punts, et cetera. What has been the key? Because we haven't seen him do it much in practice and obviously not in the game. Yeah, you know, you look at his college tape, and a lot of those were just concentration jobs. It's not like lack of, you know, ability. He, he's got good hands, um, you know, but when he's dialed in, he's he's as good as returner as there is. And then you talk about Brayden. I, I guess, Nick, what would you know about him before you started working with him, and what's it been like kind of watching him? With Nick? Right watching him work and what you see from him at camp. He's a pro's pro. I mean, there's a reason he's he's last, lasted this long, whatever, 17, 18 years. He's, he handles his business. Um, he's been good for Braden, too. Um, just from a mature standpoint, seeing how, how uh, Nick handles his business day to day. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he's, a great, he's, he's a great teammate, great leader. And um, I'm lucky as a, as a first year coordinator to have him in the room along with Morgan, um, you know, to bounce ideas off of. And, um, you know, just a great all around guy. Coverage, maybe you'd like to see a little bit better than, than uh, from what you saw against Seattle. Yeah, I mean, we gave up that first kickoff return in the opening uh, kickoff, and you you know, it's just I, I think I told you guys last week that we're trying to figure out the timing of this play and and you know what guys are capable of doing. Um, so there's a little deeper kick this this week. Uh, last week I think it landed in between the ten and the five. This one was a little deeper, and so you know, just the timing. Can we can we beat blocks by running around, or do we just have to engage with these guys and? You know, watching the film, it's, it's, I feel like it's an opportunity for us to run around these guys, but maybe we got too, too, too much uh, engaged with them. So, um, you know, we're still trying to figure out this play, but uh, unfortunately we gave up that play, but the guys came back and, and, and they were resilient and um, they were dialed in. They wanted to cover some more kicks, and, and that's what they did. Along those lines, two games in, what do you like and maybe not like about the new kickoff rule? Uh, We've been able to hit a, hit a couple of returns. Our, our guys on kickoff return um, are dialed in. They they want to see see our returner get the ball and hit it. Uh, you know, we had two penalties in the kickoff return game last week that were unfortunate. And uh, I, was, I was arguing a little bit with the refs, saying that it wasn't a hold, but on film it definitely was. Uh, so we we gotta we gotta clean that up. We but that's just all about you know timing and space and feeling you know when we can you know grab guys, get our hands inside, and and when we gotta let them go. Um, but our returners have done a great job. I'm pleased with the way they've handled it. Um, the kickoff coverage, I, I love the physicality that our guys are playing with. Um, I think we can increase uh, you know, our speed, our, our, our play speed. Um, that's that's going to pick up. And um, I, I'm pleased with the kickoff, uh, kickoff return rule. I, I think it's, it's good f to bring back this phase of the game, um, something that was missing the last couple of years. And so we'll, we'll see what happens in the regular season. Is it hard to kind of coach those guys to stand still for as long as they have to before there's contact uh, because you know guys are used to just 
going as soon as the whistle sounds. It wasn't OTAs. When we first installed this, it was, it was, it was like the wild, wild west. I mean, it's just a new play. But, uh, you know, we, we, were at, we were getting after him pretty good in, in OTAs just from the timing standpoint of when to go and when we can and can't leave from our spot. But, um, you know, guys, guys are dialed in. They're, they're, they're detailed in, in, their assignment, or in their assignment and when they can go and when they can't go. But, yeah, it's a different play. It definitely is. Do you think we're likely to see teams in general and then maybe, you know, I guess you guys in particular, try anything different in a regular season? You know, as, as maybe we've seen in the preseason, maybe a little bit vanilla in the preseason and then try something different in the regular season? Absolutely. It's just like offense and defense. I mean, we're, you know, and defensively, I'm, I'm, I know Denard's not giving them everything we got, uh, just like Coach Callahan with the offense. And, and so, you know, there's things we work on in practice that we, we don't want to put on tape. Um, you know, but at the same time, we need to see it, need to feel the timing and the space. And um, whether it's, you know, twist games on kickoff coverage or, or the way we're going to pick up twists from a kickoff return standpoint, we need to see that. And um, the only way you can really get a good grasp of it is to do it in games. So. How many games you have that play all four core special teams? I can tell you that a lot. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, if we got 90 guys on the roster, maybe 50. Maybe more. I, I don't. I don't know. Um, that's a, that's a good question. How about, how about among your first team guys, on, on the first first team, three, four guys. Uh, that's a good question. I never even thought about that. I, I don't know how to answer that. Sorry. Uh, Brian called Hassan Haskins a special teams demon. Mm -hmm. I guess physically, mentally, what does Hassan do that makes him such an effective piece of your unit? Hassan is a really good football player. Um, you know, he's a running back, but he plays with a linebacker mentality. And the way he's able to hold up in the return phase or block or, you know, hold up on punt return or block on kickoff return, um, it's a skill set that's, that's hard to find. And then, you know, his ability to coverage as a running back is, is pretty impressive. Um, there's some things he can still clean up, but I, li I like the way he, he uh, handles his business on the football field. He said that he wants to see Brian Stonehouse maybe get a couple of punts in this last game. What, what are you, as his special team coach, looking for when he goes out there, specifically, technically, all that stuff? I'm looking for him to pick up where he left off these last couple of years. I mean, he's he's the top, one of the top punters in the NFL, and uh, if it's up to me, I'd, I'd play him week one. But uh, that's 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 above my pay grade as far as you know when he can get cleared and all that. But hopefully, we can get him out there and and, and uh, you know. Get him some live snaps as as, as a punter. As, as he kind of progressed, like you had hoped and planned, and everything he's done to this point. Yeah, I'm very impressed with. He's a competitor. I told you guys that. I think it was day one. The kid's a competitor. He handles his business the right way. Um, every day he's getting better. Um, you know, from the first day he was out here punting to now is in just whatever three and a half weeks. It's pretty impressive. Um, you know the the work he's put in and you know the strides he's taken. Okay. Good chance.